Level 1. Bad dream. You're late for work. You forgot to study for an exam. Someone you care about is disappointed in you. These dreams are uncomfortable, but they're not yet terrifying. Unlike a real nightmare, this one doesn't wake you. You might feel a little uneasy when you wake up, but by the time you're brushing your teeth, it's already fading. During REM sleep, that deep stage where your eyes dart beneath your eyelids and the most vivid dreams occur. Your brain performs what scientists call file compression, sorting through the day's events, discarding what doesn't matter, and keeping what does. Had an awkward conversation? Your mind might replay it with slight distortions. Worried about money? You might dream about losing your wallet. What defines level one is forgettability. By lunchtime, you won't even remember what the dream was about, but level two changes that. Level two, classic nightmare. This is what most people think of when they hear the word nightmare. You're being chased through dark hallways, falling from impossible heights. Someone or something is attacking you and you can't fight back. You try to scream, but no sound comes out and your body reacts like the threat is real. Your heart races, you're sweating. Your brain floods your system with cortisol and adrenaline the same chemicals released during actual danger. You jolt awake at 2 a.m., heart pounding, maybe even gasping for air. It takes a few seconds to remember where you are, to convince yourself it wasn't real. Classic nightmares happen during REM sleep, just like bad dreams. But there's a key difference. The amygdala, your brain's fear center, goes into overdrive. Your brain is basically running a simulation to process threats Asking, what if this happened? Could I survive it? Rehearsing how you'd react to danger to prepare you to face stress or threats in waking life. Unlike level one, you remember it vividly. Days later, you can still recall the feeling of running, the sense of dread, the moment you woke up. Most people never go beyond level two, but some do. Level three, recurring nightmare, the same nightmare, over and over again, same hallway, same monster, same moment of terror, night after night, sometimes for weeks or even years. Your brain doesn't randomly replay the same dream for no reason. When a nightmare recurs, it's because the fear behind it hasn't been resolved. There's something your subconscious is trying to work through and it won't stop until you deal with it. Maybe you're dreaming about drowning because you feel overwhelmed in your waking life or that dream about being trapped because you feel stuck in a situation you can't escape. The nightmare is a symbol, and your brain keeps showing it to you like a flashing warning light on a dashboard. Studies have shown that one out of every two adults has nightmares on occasion, but between 2% and 8% of the adult population experience nightmares frequently. While occasional nightmares are generally harmless, Frequent nightmares often reflect underlying pathologies of emotional regulation that associated with insomnia, depression, anxiety, or alcohol use. Level three is when you start to fear going to sleep because you know what's waiting for you. Level four, lucid nightmare. You realize you're dreaming. You become conscious inside the nightmare. In a normal lucid dream, this would be liberating. You'd take control fly away, reshape reality. But in a lucid nightmare, awareness doesn't give you power. Instead, it traps you. The monster is still chasing you. The walls are still closing in. You're screaming at yourself to wake up, move your fingers, blink your eyes, anything to break free. But your body won't respond. Here's what's happening in your brain. Your prefrontal cortex, the part responsible for self-awareness, is active, you're conscious, but the region's controlling motor function and voluntary action remain suppressed. You can think, analyze, even recognize the absurdity of what's happening, but you can't act upon it. What makes this so terrifying is the loss of the one thing lucid dreaming promises, control. You have all the awareness of being awake, but none of the control. Some people report that lucid nightmares feel longer than regular nightmares. Time distorts. 
what might be 30 seconds in real time can feel like hours trapped in that conscious state of terror. Level 5. Night Terrors This is where the nightmare escapes your mind and enters the physical world. Night terrors are different from nightmares. You're not just dreaming anymore. You're acting out the dream while still completely asleep. You might sit up in bed, eyes wide open but seeing nothing. You might scream, thrash, run across the room. Your heart rate spikes to dangerous levels, sometimes over 160 beats per minute. You're drenched in sweat, gasping for air, fighting an enemy that doesn't exist outside your mind. And the disturbing part is you won't remember any of it. Night terrors don't happen during REM sleep like nightmares do. They occur during deep, non-REM sleep in stage 3 or 4, the deepest part of your sleep cycle. Your body isn't paralyzed the way it is during REM, so you can move, and you do. Your brain is stuck between sleeping and waking. The parts responsible for fear and motor function are active, but the parts that create memories and rational thinking are not. You're running on pure primal panic with no conscious awareness. Studies show that night terrors are most common in children, but about 2% of adults experience them regularly. They're often triggered by sleep deprivation, stress, fever, or certain medications. So when it comes to level 5, other people remember it more than you do. You might wake up confused, find yourself in a different room, or have your partner tell you what happened. But the terror itself is already gone. Level 6. Sleep Paralysis Here, nightmares become something else entirely. You wake up. Or, at least, you think you do. You're lying in bed, fully conscious, eyes open. You can see your room. You know where you are. But you can't move. Not your arms. Not your legs. Not even your fingers. You try to scream, but no sound comes out. Your body has betrayed you completely. And then you realize you're not alone. There's a presence in the room. You can feel it. Sometimes you can see it. A shadow figure standing in the corner. A dark shape sitting on your chest. A face hovering inches from yours. The pressure on your chest makes it hard to breathe. Your heart is pounding, but you're frozen, completely unable to defend yourself. Sleep paralysis happens when your brain wakes up before your body does. During REM sleep, your muscles are temporarily paralyzed to prevent you from acting out your dreams. But sometimes that paralysis lingers after you regain consciousness. You're awake, aware, but still trapped in your body's sleep state. Studies show that up to 40% of people will experience sleep paralysis at least once in their lifetime. The hallucinations that accompany it, the shadow figures, the sense of presence, the feeling of being watched happen because your brain is trying to explain why you can't move. It creates a threat to match your terror, turning the paralysis itself into a predator. In level 6, you're not dreaming anymore. This is happening in your actual bedroom, in real time, while you're conscious. The line between nightmare and reality has dissolved. Some cultures have given names to these entities. The old hag in Newfoundland? The night hag in Turkish folklore, sleep paralysis demons have haunted humanity for centuries. Level 7, Trauma Nightmare. You're back in the car during the accident, back in the moment you got the news, back in the place where everything changed. Every detail is exact. The sounds, the smells, the crushing weight of what happened. Your brain is replaying reality with perfect, merciless accuracy. Trauma nightmares are the hallmark of post-traumatic stress disorder. Studies show that 50% to 70% of people with PTSD experience recurring nightmares that replay their traumatic events. Unlike other nightmares, these don't happen exclusively during REM sleep. They can intrude during any stage, breaking through whenever your guard is down. What makes level 7 different from every other level is that you can't dismiss it when you wake up. You can't tell yourself it was just a dream because it wasn't. It happened. The nightmare is just your mind refusing to let you forget. 
your body remembers too. The same physiological response you had during the actual trauma, elevated heart rate, cortisol flooding your system, the freeze response, all of it comes back. You're not just remembering the event, you're re-experiencing it at a neurological level. Some people with trauma nightmares stop sleeping altogether. They'll fight sleep for days because they know what's waiting for them. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you already know what to do.